So we're going to get started. Uh, the first thing I want to make today is a little different take on Italian ice. Um, I need one, so I know. There we go. And uh, usually, uh, everything that you see in my videos, uh, I, I do it differently from everyone else. My way costs a little more, uh, but I have lines of people at, at customer stores to buy this product. Anybody can make a product that's cold and will cool you off and you can sell it at Yankee Stadium. Uh, we want a product that people seek you out and will stand in line to get. And the difference is only a few pennies. On a um, three gallon tub, uh, I could make this to sell uh, to a captive audience, a fair, a festival, a stadium. Uh, I, I could make this uh, for about uh, $5.50. And at uh, 250 or $3 a scoop, I'm making several hundred dollars uh, off of this. Or I can make it using fresh ingredients, which we're going to do today. Uh, and it'll bump the cost to about $9. And even then, that's selling it, buying the, all the ingredients retail at the supermarket. If you uh, become a conscientious shopper, you can uh, easily knock a dollar, dollar fifty off of that. So the bottom line is Italian ice is just pure profit. We have a question already. What size is that bucket? Here? This one is two and a half. Uh, I have three gallons here, and you won't be able to tell the difference. The uh, two and a half has a taper, and the three is a full size. And it really doesn't matter which one you use, it's personal taste and where you can get the best price. Uh, so normally my lemon ice formula is sugar, water, and lemon juice. That's, that's my secret formula. And uh, in fact, if you want to write it down, you can see the video at emerythompson.com and all my uh, formulas are there. Um, it's uh, on the bigger machine that Jeff's going to use, it's a 24 quart. It's seven pounds of sugar, 14 quarts of water, and two quarts of fresh squeezed lemon juice. So I was out here yesterday afternoon at 2.30 in the ice cream room here <laughs> squeezing 24 lemons. Not what I heard. <laughs> no, I did it. Um, and Italian ice uh, also has a bunch of different names. It's known as, in New York, we call it Italian ice. You go down the Jersey Turnpike, and it's called Italian water ice. Um, you can, uh, it's also in a fine French restaurant. It would be called lemon sorbet. The fine French, uh, fine Italian restaurant, it would be lemon sorbetto. Uh, up in Boston, they call it slushy or slush. Uh, and in the um, um, markets, like um, we sell to Universal Studios and Disney and SeaWorld and Six Flags, uh, they call it frozen lemonade. It's basically sugar, water, and flavor, and um, and there's just slight variations on it. Seven Eleven like Slurpee. Uh, no, uh, they just call it slush or slushy. It's not like 7-Eleven Slurpee because that's just uh, corn syrup, water, and artificial color and artificial flavor. We don't stoop that low, and not even the, the wholesale people stoop that low. Um, so uh, the, the main difference, though, is people call up and say, well, I prefer a Philadelphia ice. Sam, Paula, she's in here. You can come get her. Sammy has, our golden retriever is roaming around in the back that you can't see. Um, a New York ice is different from a Philadelphia ice. The Philadelphia ice is smoother. And uh, the secret to that is that there is one pound more sugar in a Philadelphia ice. So instead of seven pounds of sugar, 14 quarts of water, two quarts of lemon juice, it's eight pounds of sugar. 14 quarts of water and two quarts of lemon juice. And that's the only difference. Uh, also, sometimes when you're making a flavor, like we're going to make um, a pumpkin ice cream later, and I've put down to add a little more sugar. Uh, it's not necessarily, adding a little bit more sugar is not necessarily going to make it sweeter. Uh, it oftentimes will make the flavor pop. So if you've got kind of a bland flavor like pumpkin, I'm hoping to bring the flavor out a little stronger by adding a little bit of sugar, sugar uh, to the recipe. So anybody's secret formulas are all based on my general formulas uh, that are at the website, and they're all for free. Uh, Jeff and I were talking about this uh, this morning, that uh, since the two of us started this, uh, we have had the attitude, Jeff with his uh, classes, 
and me with building machinery. We give everything away for free. We, we teach you everything we know about how to make ices, ice cream, gelatos, sorbets, dairy-free ice cream. We can talk about paleo ice cream today if you want. Uh, <laughs> all these different products. We give it all away for free, and it, I think it's a pretty good sales marketing tool because, quite frankly, everything is about selling. And instead of the way uh, I used to do it back in the Bronx, well, you, if you buy a machine, I'm going to come over and I'm going to teach you how to make ice cream. No, we're going to teach you how to make ice cream and ices and all the other products before you spend a dime. That way, your natural instinct is going to be, hey, those guys taught me everything I need to know, where to buy dipping cabinets, where to get flavors, what size scoop do I use, all for free. Why would I go to anyone else? I mean, they're, they're really there to help us. So that's our goal today. And that's enough talking. So I've never made this before. Uh, I'm going to use honey instead of uh, cane sugar. And Jeff is the honey expert. I, I tried to make something with honey once before. In fact, I still have it. Um, I, I bought some honey. This, this stuff was $1.98 uh, for a 55-gallon drum. And it tasted like it was $1.98 for a 55-gallon drum. This is $25.98. Wow. But as you'll hear Jeff say today, uh, and he'll prove his point very nicely, it doesn't matter what the ingredients cost. What matters is the quality is so exceptional to everybody else, you're going to have lines out the door. But he'll go into that uh, in great detail. So how much oh, we're going to do a half batch today, we said. Uh, so we're going to use... You have the juice of 24? 24 lemons, yeah. Okay, here's your water. Yeah. Four quarts. Four quarts. And then we'll uh, do uh, honey to, to taste. Okay, so I'm going to start with... Because the machine will mix it for us. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, you were talking about your honey. I use honey too, but what is the difference between probably your clover honey and my wildflower honey? There's hundreds of different honeys. Hundreds, maybe thousands of different honeys. Because as we know, it's the only sustainable product on the planet that won't go bad. It lasts forever. Uh, you, you really have to go by taste uh, for, with honey. Uh, today we're going to use wildflower honey. Okay, that's what I want. Uh, but the other one that I had was sourwood honey. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's just a million different kind of honeys. Uh, so yeah, it's taste, that's all. Okay. So this is all clean, sanitized, ready to go. Uh, this is my CB350. It makes six quarts at a time, making sure the gate's closed. Why? Because the last thing I did was pour water in here to sanitize it, and so I left the gate open. So first problem. I'm going to teach you also the problems that you might run into. I mean, when you first learned how to drive a car, unless you're a millennial today, uh, the first thing your parents taught you was how to change the tire, just in case you've got to change the tire. So I'm going to teach you how to change the tire. Um, and so it, part of that is the last thing we did was we had water in here for sanitizing. We're going to close the gate. Otherwise, I'm going to be pouring it in, and it's going to come all falling out, and you're going to curse me. He makes a machine that leaks, the whole works. No, the gate's open. So simple stuff like that. Six quarts. That's the rated capacity. It actually makes a little bit more. Ooh, nice pour. Thank you. The lemon juice is conspicuously absent. That's because it's conspicuously in the uh, refrigerator. So let me go get it. Yes. All right. When you're using sugar versus honey, what's the ratio? We have no idea. Oh, good. Never made uh, uh, lemon ice with honey instead of sugar. Never done it. Okay. But we were talking the other night, and we thought we lemon ice. He's the king of lemon ice, and we always make it. But let's try with honey. See what happens. Uh, actually, he asked me. We wanted to use honey today as a theme, so what fruit would go good with honey? And I, we hung up the phone, and I'm thinking and talking to my wife and thinking and thinking, you know, honey strawberry, honey cherry, no good. And then 
honey lemon. It's it's so perfect. Uh, so we'll give it a shot. Did Sammy leave? Because the honey and the ice are probably not going to break up. Well, okay, maybe. I better go. To no, you won't. The, the consistency will be fine. Yeah. It, it should be just smooth as silk. The taste, we're going to have to experiment. And since this machine is going to be spinning internally at 234 revolutions per minute, it's the world's best mixer. So we'll add the water, we'll add the lemon juice, and then we'll add honey to taste. And when we get the taste we think is good, we stop adding honey. Okay. It's not scientific, but remember, you get into this business for three reasons. You get into it for profit, of course. The second one is art. There's an art to this. Even if you follow all the recipes, there's an art to it. You'll tweak it, you'll want more bananas, less lemons, more strawberries, whatever. So, and the third reason is fun. This is the most fun business in the world. Oh, sorry. Yeah, even if you can be in the worst mood in the world walking into an ice cream parlor, but I guarantee you're gonna walk out in a good mood. So that's, okay. that's nice to be in All a, the lemon juice. Well, this is, no, this is one quart right here. And then, we, so we're just putting in a quart. Which is from 24 lemons, both of them? Both of them. Well, throw them in. We can offset it with honey. <laughs> You say so. Steve gets nervous when, <laughs> when Frankenstein starts creating. <laughs> Four quarts of water, right? Yes. It's in there. Okay. Well, we can always add more. Let's, whatever. let's, let's hold on to it. We'll add the honey and then go from okay. there. Okay. Otherwise, we can freeze them. Close it up. Turn it on. Let's start mixing. All right. So I'm No hit, sugar I'm is in there. Touching the infinite overrun to Italian ice. Start. And now it's spinning. There's no refrigeration on. It's not. Uh, it's not getting cold. It's just uh, mixing at the moment. What would happen if you forgot to put sugar or honey in? Uh, if I forgot to put sugar in or honey, it would freeze up like a block of ice, and the machine will stop itself. A little voice comes on and says, "Shame on you." <laughs> no, it doesn't really. Time on Saturday, you really blew Remember, it happens all the time. Focus. You must focus. Otherwise, you'll forget. The other day, we almost forgot. Uh, what did we almost forget? See, I forgot what we almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Making ice cream or ices during your busiest time when you're all hands on deck are needed for scooping ice cream doesn't make sense. You want to make it at, say, 9.30 in the morning. But that, uh, sometimes you have to make it when there's a crowd. In fact, Swenson's Ice Cream Parlors in San Francisco, back in the uh, 70s, 80s, and 90s, always made at least a batch of ice cream on Saturday night at 7.30 and Sunday night at 7.30, uh, because they knew it drew the crowds. You can't have children and just sit at home and watch Netflix all day long. You gotta, they want to do something. So, let's go out to, instead of Dairy Queen or some other bland place, they say, let's go out to Jeff's uh, Mystic Ice and get an ice cream. Because uh, we know old man Markow's coming out at uh, 7.30 and he's got a tub of something he just made fresh and he's giving out free samples of it. Now you're providing entertainment and, uh, and you're selling the product. If you walk around uh, this building, you'll see, looking into all the offices, a lot of big picture windows. Everybody can see what's going on. I took that directly from Swenson's because Swenson's was called Swenson's See Us Freeze and you could go up to the window and, and watch them making ice cream. More entertainment, more proof that it's homemade. So if it works into your store, it's great fun. Now I have to disagree a little bit. I think my philosophy is you can never make ice cream while you're open, while the store is open. Because all you need is this much distraction and your formula is messed up, you forget to pull it, you pull it too soon, too late. There's so many things that can go wrong. So in my shop, never ice cream is made while, the, while we're open. He's not wrong. We give on every machine lifetime technical support, and you can reach us nights, weekends, holidays, uh, just about any time, uh, up and from 6 in the morning till 10 at night. Uh, and the most common thing that I hear on weekends is I froze the machine up, what do I do? And uh, it's very simple. You unplug it from the wall and you open it up and you take everything out and start over. Uh, and then everything will be fine. But 
uh, the easiest thing to do, and I don't even have one right now, go buy a cheap kitchen timer. And if the batch is gonna take, say, 14 minutes for ices, eight minutes for ice cream, set it for two minutes earlier. And you can even walk around with it in your pocket. But when that buzzer goes off, hey, I've got two minutes to get back to my machine and check on it. So it's really that simple. We do not put automatic shutoffs on these machines. I know Capajani and the other people do, and they don't work. And the reason they don't work is because they're assuming every flavor has the same freezing time. The more Jeff puts into this, uh, the more honey, the longer the freezing time. So strawberry ice cream uh, is getting more sweetness than vanilla because of the strawberries. Strawberries are sweet. That's extra sugar to the formula. Your freezing time goes from eight minutes to maybe eight and a half or nine. I don't want a machine that always cuts off at eight minutes because 99% uh, of the time the product's not ready and I gotta turn it back on. Hi, welcome. How is it, Jeff? Perfect? I think it's pretty, you wanna try right. it? Would you try it? All right. More honey? A little sweeter, and a maybe sweeter. a little bit more lemon. Well, <laughs> that's gonna offset. I know, but I wanna, I wanna, I think a little more sweeter, I wanna up the flavor a bit. Okay. You don't care how you spend my money. No, not at all. Okay, now we're gonna turn on the refrigeration switch. Whoa. Well, oh, I tested. Well, I, okay. okay if you're so here we go, we turn that on. And I'll just have to watch it because I don't even have my cell phone on me. You want? Oh, yeah, okay. If you'll give me uh, uh, 10 minutes. Thanks. Any questions so far? Yes. Does this have to go to a batch freezer? I mean, a, a blast freezer after it's finished? Um, does this have to go into a blast freezer? It has to go into a cold freezer, but not a blast freezer. Uh, the audience can't see it. What do you I mean, the uh, camera can't see it, but off to my right is a uh, Home Depot uh, chest freezer. That's a great place to put Italian ice. Off to my left is a bona fide flash freezer that goes to 30, 40 below. That's a great place to put ice cream. So it really comes down to what you can afford. Most everybody starts off with a batch freezer and a couple of uh, chest freezers. And then as volume goes up, uh, you're making more money, you have the option of getting a flash freezer or better yet, the best option is a walk-in because uh, you can run my machinery 10, 24 hours a day and in developing countries that's exactly what they do. They're paying low wages, they run them 24 hours a day. Uh, but once you fill up your freezer space, you can't make any more ice cream because you have no place to put it. So when the customer calls up in a year and a half and says, I'm running my machine uh, eight hours a day, and uh, I, I, I need bigger machinery. I go, no, you don't. You need more freezer space because you could run it 16 hours a day. You could run it 20 hours a day. But once you fill up the freezers, there's nowhere to go. You can't make it and just let it sit here. Yes? You talk about shelf life for ice cream. How long can it stay in the freezer? Uh, it can stay in the freezer for three or four months. Uh, for ice cream and Italian ice is about uh, a month and a half. But you have to ask yourself a more important question about than what the shelf life is. If you're making, as my, I always use my example, if you're wondering if your bubblegum licorice ice cream that's been in the freezer for four months is any good, technically the answer is yes, it's as good as the day you made it. <coughs> but if it's sitting in there for four months, the public is telling you, we don't like bubblegum licorice ice cream, it's a lousy flavor, get rid of it. If you can't turn over your inventory, you're not selling the right product. And, and it's, it's really that simple. Uh, sure, there can be mistakes. Yes? The tub that you use for the smaller machines is the same for the cold pork? You can use any size tub that you want on these machines. This is a gelato pan. This is a six liter gelato pan. And this usually fits into a, in a cabinet into a stainless steel holder. The stainless steel holder is very expensive. These are very cheap and uh, I reuse them. So uh, I, I buy these by the hundreds and uh, I like it because it's gonna match this machine, this plus a little extra. But you can use, Jeff uses the Cambro, which if you come up later, this is just beautiful solid plastic and it's got increments on it. Uh, he uses these exclusively 
uh, because uh, it's a nice amount of ice cream to scoop as opposed to the old fashioned way. Uh, my machines are rated on these two and a half or three gallon tubs. And this machine is gonna make two of these uh, maximum in one batch. This is gonna make one of these in one batch. So it comes down to uh, time and money. This is, I don't think we can give prices on uh, the internet because of um, the, the restrictions, but the, all my prices are at my website. But this machine is less than half the cost of this. So if you have the money and the need and you want to cut your labor, you buy a bigger machine. If you want to get into business, you buy this. This is the largest selling machine in the world because it's the best priced and it will do absolutely everything that the bigger ones will do. Does it take the same amount of time to uh, make it in a bigger machine than that? It's identical on these uh, for ice cream. The Italian ice is a couple of minutes longer in the bigger machine because it's such a big volume of sugar water. But on Italian ice, the key, the, the key to it is we're literally making wet cement. Uh, anybody can make ice cream, but Italian ice is just so heavy and so dense that it'll just twist out their dashers. This is the 24 quart dasher. I've got a couple of spring clips on it so it doesn't come apart, but that baby's heavy. That's really heavy, that's all stainless steel. And the Delrin blades, while everybody else is changing their blades every six months, we go five years. Five years before we have to even think about doing the blades. That's Jeff's machine. Uh, my machine running today is this one. So everything is the same designs uh, and the same functions. And I gotta tell you, that's really hurting my wrist to hold it like that. It's, it's heavy. I'll pass it around. The springs, uh, they're spring loaded so that no matter how old the blades get, they're still gonna act as if they're today brand new because the springs are pushing them out. So uh, the reason it's holding together right now is just a couple of safety springs, but normally you would just put it together and run it, but I'll pass that around. Italian ice in this machine takes 18 minutes, this one takes about 14 minutes. Yes. Question for Jeff. Jeff, um, your honey that you pur that you purchase, um, do, you, uh, do you buy it in bladders or how do you get it? I, do. I buy it from a beekeeper in Georgia, and he sells it in bladders. Uh, that's how they come. Uh, when he uh, called me, I had to quickly uh, get that, so I went on Amazon to get that. Uh, because it's good quality honey, but normally for in bladders from Georgia. And the guy's on eBay. Uh, I don't know exactly, uh, but if you go on eBay and you'll see him, he's uh, just, he sells bulk honey in bladders from Georgia. He's the beekeeper. Yes, sir. How much honey are you up to right now? What was that, 32 ounces? That's five pounds. Honey is sold in pounds, even oh. though it's, it's sort of a liquid. It's always sold by weight. So we use probably four and a half pounds of honey. Yeah. So the, the formula would be 24 lemon, a quart of lemon juice, uh, four quarts of water, and four and a half pounds of honey. But remember, honey is going to vary. You know, certain honeys are much sweeter than others. Any other questions? Yes. So, sorry for being late, so I don't know if you already uh, talked about it. So, um, how long takes the, the first batch of ice cream in the big machine? Well, that's, that's an impossible question to answer. I'll answer it how we did in class, we talked about it. The first batch of anything of the day, the first batch, will take longer than subsequent batches because the machine isn't cold yet. Uh, and how long does it take? I, I gave them each a hundred recipes yesterday, and each one will be different in time, depending upon the ingredients. The more sugar, the more alcohol, the more sweeteners of any kind, the longer the batch will take. If you just pour in the bladder of a mix, ice cream mix, giving you bland vanilla ice cream, it's probably, in this machine, a 10 quart bladder is probably seven and a half minutes. And you've got, I'm sorry? 
the following one, four to five? Yes, but if you then decide to make cherry vanilla on the next batch and add maraschino cherries and some cherry juice, now you're going to go to nine and a half minutes, ten minutes. Uh, so it, it, every batch, every recipe, you've got a hundred recipes I gave you, the time, you can't put the time on it. And that's why it's so important to focus. Uh, how many times did I use that word in the last couple of days? You must focus. If the store is open and you're suddenly making a plain that's chocolate or plain vanilla or whatever, then it's going to take much less time. So before you know it, the ice cream's done and you didn't account for that. So uh, it's just every batch is different. Every single batch is different in time. And that's why there's no timer on the machine. If you put a timer on these machines, it's a false positive. You, you're going you're gonna to rely on it when you shouldn't. Uh, and when you pull the ice cream, when, it, when you feel it's ready, uh, he pulls it different than I do. You know, I tend to pull it sooner, he pulls it later. A texture sensor on the machine? A what? A texture, a texture sensor that tells you when it's ready? No, it can't be. Yeah, but sometimes you could have a, a gradual uh, dial when you are telling the machine to tell you when the texture... And they don't, and they don't work. No. Uh, I can't. invented that back in 1975, and we didn't give it a fancy name like a sensor. We called it an amp meter. And I was selling some machines. They did not sell well because everybody goes, well, what do I need that for? The way any sensor works is it's measuring the load on the motor. When you're making, when you put a liquid in and you're turning it into a semi-solid, the, mo the load on the motor goes up. So that's fine. We're going to be longer. Um, so it's the, the amperage is going up. So I had an amp meter on here. Capigiani took the idea and called it the Hardomatic <laughs> for many years, and then they changed it to the Hardotronic, and it still doesn't work because all it's doing is telling you the load on the motor. It doesn't take into account that strawberry ice cream is never going to come out as thick as uh, vanilla ice cream because of the density of the strawberries and everything else. It's it's a fool's game. I have been building, my family's been building these for 115 years. We can put any gadget on it. Nobody else has the infinite overrun control. Nobody else has cast stainless steel doors. All these things are incredibly innovative, but I don't put junk on my machines. And if you talk to people who have machines with junk on them, you're going to find out that that little control, whatever that control is, takes down the whole machine. The whole machine is down. Um, that, and that doesn't happen with an Emory Thompson. You can still keep running no matter what because it's dead simple. This is, I mean, if you're baking a cake, if you're a baker, you do not, you set your timer for 22 minutes, you put in your cakes, you don't come back afterwards and immediately take out 20, the, the, all the cakes. You test the cake because every cake is different for density or quality. So I look at this stuff and I just laugh and I say, you just keep making it your way. And that's why we've got 90% of the business because we do it simple and honest. This is the way you make ice cream. You actually have to look at it. And this is coming along nicely. Now I'm seeing a property here <laughs> that the honey, we're, we're doing fine on the time, but the honey takes longer to freeze than sugar. So we'll be able to calculate that in and tell people uh, and you asked, the original question was, well, if the first batch takes, I say, eight minutes, because I pull stiffer, uh, will the second batch be five? No. The second batch will be maybe seven and a half. If I make 20 batches of vanilla, one right after the other, the second batch, the 10th batch, the 14th batch will all be seven and a half minutes. If I rinse out the machine or go to another flavor, boom, I'm back up to approximately eight minutes. Every flavor is different. I don't know any, and because baking and, and ice cream are the same thing. I don't know any baker who just relies on electronics and walks away. I mean, that's fool stuff. I mean, that's, that's for people who don't know what they're doing, but it sure looks good. And it looks like real fun that the machine's going to do all the thinking for me. Okay, I, yes, sir. So what if you want to make mass quantity of it? 
see what she's saying is just for individual. What's mass quantity? But I can find that. Like if you wholesale it or something. Like say if you want to wholesale your world. All right. right. What would you suggest that you do? Because basically what you're saying is you have a store and you want the best water ice, but that's kind of, you know, hard to do to make a lot to be that precise. Then you buy a bigger machine. The machine, he's got a 40. The largest machine in the world is our 11-gallon machine. 11 gallons. Well, 11 gallons. That's, that's 44 quarts. That's four tops. But you can and run one. these machines, any of them, 24 7. I know, but think about it. You run it 24 7, you don't want to take the time every batch. You can still be kind of a person who's tired. They're getting paid for it. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> you know, you hire them to work from midnight to 7 a.m., they're getting paid for it. Tastes pretty uh, good. Much different than regular lemon ice. Does it? Much different. Yeah, I guess it this does. This is gourmet. Huh? This is gourmet. Okay. <laughs> That's holding. Any other questions right now? Nobody? Okay. <laughs> Jeff, what are you going to be making first today? I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Here's a question right here. <laughs> Steve, do you still have the 11-gallon in stock? I'm sorry? Do you have the 11-gallon machine in stock? Uh, today we do, yes. You have your checkbook with you? Okay, then he's got one. No, we do have one. They put it on my desk last night. <laughs> Hello, Darren. Get that one ready. We've got a live one here. Hey, Mike, lock the door. He's got money. <laughs> No, we do have one. When we take a tour, we'll go see it. Um, we're not custom, or, I mean, we are custom building machines. We build it to the location, but we're not sitting around waiting. We're always above full capacity. So people put in an order and it's about uh, four weeks to get a machine because there's that many orders ahead of you. But in your case... <laughs> in your case, we have a 44 in stock. <laughs> it's sitting by the loading box. <laughs> And we won't even charge you extra. <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> I want one of these. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. Why didn't we think of that a hundred years ago? What's that? This. This machine. Oh, the old thing. Yeah. You know what Jeff's talking about? Um, these are both brand new machines, just finished yesterday, and they said, don't you dare scratch them. Uh, oh, I've got an idea for you. We're going to make $200. Um, so they come in and they take the top lid and they flip it over and put it on top of the machine with a couple of pads. <laughs> and I looked at it and I said, oh my gosh, you're giving me a headache. Everybody's going to look at this tray and say, it's a new innovation, Emory Thompson. And then I thought, I wait a minute, <laughs> we can sell this to all the old timers. Everybody who's already got a machine because your, your, your stuff isn't falling off. You got this nice tray. I said, we can do it, make a gold mine. It's so perfect. here's the other thing. You've always been running uh, a 12 port and you- 24. Tw well, no, here you've been running a 12. Oh, right. And right. you begged me for a 24. And, and the answer was no, 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 no. And then I thought of something last night. I thought, I, I'm still gonna let this machine go right away. But we will build, uh, we'll take a machine every time we have a show coming, we'll take a brand new machine and bring it in here. And then since it's run by Jeff and Steve for $200, we'll autograph it. <laughs> well, that'll go over real big. I sold one once autographed. I didn't charge for it, but we took a big old magic, mar uh, magic marker and, and uh, put best wishes to Harry's Ice Cream Parlor on the side of the machine, and then I signed it. Getting there. Yeah. So the, we're finding out, this is the first time from this, the honey takes longer to freeze. Not over the top, so what are you looking at to let you know that it's done? How do we know if it's done? When it's done, peak. What? It's peak. Peak. When, when you let some out and it makes a peak and doesn't do that, done. Hello. And that's, that's very subjective. You know, Jimmy will, t will make it different than Claude, his father, will. It's, that's why as soon as you have an employee making your product, for whatever reason, the recipe's there, and it's going to be different. No matter what you do, it's going to be different. He'll be there alone, and he'll say, well, it looks ready to me. 
doesn't look ready to me. Or he'll taste it and say, damn, did I put enough sugar in? I think I ought to add a little more sugar. It's always going to be different. As soon as you relinquish control to an employee, your product will change. It may not change for the worse, it may not be catastrophic, but it's going to be different. You know, it's funny you say that because people call up and they say, I've been running my Emory Thompson for 17 years and all of a sudden now I'm having this trouble, this trouble, this trouble. And I figured it out and I said, so, you've gotten lazy and you're not making your ice cream anymore. Well, I've got so many other things to do. And you hired a 17-year-old uh, a to make your ice cream. Yeah, but he's very good. He yeah. said, no, he's not very, very good. He's making a lot of mistakes. Yeah. And it wasn't the machine, it was the operator. You know what, I just tasted that and I don't like honey. Really? I don't put honey in anything, but I guess if you like honey, it's going to be great. We, we make several ice creams with honey. Okay. But it's good, and it's almost ready. It's gourmet. It's gourmet. Gourmet okay. lemon ices. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's gourmet lemon ices. Are these air cooled? This machine is air cooled. This is the water countertops cooled. are all air cooled. The, the bigger ones can be air or water, depending on what you buy. What you suggest? I suggest water cooled because if I had a machine this big and air cooled, and I was running it, this room's at 72 degrees, 74 degrees. It would go up to 84 degrees in one hour. And uh, water is expensive. Uh, but it goes up pennies a year. If you look at last year's water bill to this year's, it didn't go up very much in price. But your electric bill for air conditioning, every time there's a disturbance in the Mideast, there goes your electric bill. Whether it affects the United States or not, they just raise the world price. I think we're ready. What do you think? I'll let you know in about a minute what I think. All right. <laughs> because we have to yes. serve it now. Would it be feasible if you designed it where you had like a, an output on the back of air cold ones, um, where, where like, you know, you have a dryer hookup where it takes the hot air out, it's outside? It's insignificant. Unless you're working in a closet. I know Steve disagrees with me, but it doesn't change your air conditioning bill. It's it's insignificant. It's okay. it's just a, you I know. I did when I had the six quart. Yeah, but the six quart is inssignificant. But that thing. Oh is, no, you shouldn't this have is, no. This is a no. six and a quarter horpower. Total Water running. cooled is just much yeah. more. This efficient. is four times as big. Right. Ready? Yes. All right. Refrigeration's off. We're gonna open the gate. Watch this. This is the other thing on those Italian ice machines. They take or the Capuchani's. They take a scoop and put it in. Take a scoop and put it in. You're there all day. Watch this. I need a. It's a beautiful thing. Get the other one behind you. Yeah. I'm, Here. I'm going for a small one. So, we will see what it tastes like. Anybody want to try it? Yes. No? Yes. Well, come on up. All right, come on up and try it. What? 21, yeah, it took a long, honey's a long time. Thank you. Oh. Hey, Alfie. Oh, you made it. Yeah, Good. Yes. You picked him up? Yeah. Good. I'm sorry? I was afraid. And I said, and I told her, I, I told Chrissy, I said, when they want to ride back, that doesn't mean to Naples. <laughs> hey, welcome. Good to see you. Did that answer your question? Okay. Well, I told her, I got. Thank you, sir. Sure. Where are you from, Michael? Texas. What part? Uh, South Central, a little town called Yoke. Oh, not far from Houston? Two hours from Houston, yes, sir. Boy, Houston tomorrow night, huh? Oh, oh, it was great. Nice ball, yes, sir. Yeah. I almost went to the game last night. It's like, no, oh, wait. Well, I hope you can wait. <laughs> you want some for Mike? Yes. Spoon? Can I have two? 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 Can I have two
Davenport. Sure. I like your cons. Nice cons. How'd you train her that good? Hey, move your sweater. What's your name? Kim? Kim. Take a spoon, Kim. Okay. Faith. That's Tim. Is this hope? No, he's Tim and we don't say it. And you don't what? Sing. Tim and Faith. You know, the singers, country singers. I don't know anything about that. He's not a country music fan. No. I, I know that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, this is basically two things honey and lemon. That's it. Honey and lemon. How is it? It's different. It's different. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to sell it at Dodger Stadium. Take it away. I'm the sugar. Yeah.